<laughs> okay. And the Hangout is live. Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, just before we get started, I'd like Monica. Um, she's our Twitter broadcast. Just to say a quick hello, and then she'll step away, and I can pull in Tash. Kia ora, everyone. It's Monica here, um, Belchick on Twitter. Um, I'm calling for Brisbane today, and I'm really happy to be part of this um, Teach Meet NZ. So thanks for having me, and I will see you all on Twitter. Thanks, Monica. Okay, I'm gonna, if you don't mind dropping away, and I'll bring in Tash now. Can you drop me off? Oh no, there we go. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye, bye Monica. And I've just called in Tash. She's going to join us shortly as well. And she should be shortly here. Tash, I've called you. You're picking up. Lovely. Oh, very quiet group now. Nice mm. quiet class. <laughs> okay, just to start again, um, welcome everybody, Tyler Falava and Kiora, and you, I'm Sonia Van Schaik. I'm streaming here from Auckland in New Zealand. The weather today has been absolutely diabolical. Um, this is uh, the second uh, Teach Meet NZ session, uh, the general one for the year. And we've got a fabulous lineup of people. And I welcome everybody. And um, I'm going to take it as in the order of um, presenters. So if you, the, each educator is going to pop up and um, say hello and share a little bit about themselves. <clears throat> so we've got here first um, Jenny, if you don't mind coming up first to the screen. Virginia? Yeah. Okay. And I on there? Yes, you are. We can see you. you have the camera's Hi. on you. Hi, I'm Virginia Kung, um, the assistant principal at Newmarket Primary School. My Twitter handle is at GinnyNZ01. Um, and I'm pleased to be the timekeeper today. So um, I'll be making sure everyone keeps to time. So thank you. Thank you, Ginny. Um, the camera's on you. Stuart, you're up next. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Stuart Kelly. I teach at RDD College in Papatau, Auckland, and I'm a deputy principal and a year 13 English teacher. And currently, I have a little Jack Russell called Cooper staring straight at me, wondering what on earth is going on. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Stuart. Um, Tash, you're up next. The camera's on you. Uh, kia ora, uh, kona tasha toku ingoa. I'm currently based at Newmarket Primary School in Auckland and I've been working with Tuafitu or Akarana and RTLB cluster based in Auckland. Welcome Tash. We've got um, Stephen, you're up next. Hi, my name is Stephen. Um, I work at Newland Primary School. I'm a year one and two teacher, so five and six year olds. Um, and I'm really excited to be presenting today. Fabulous. Welcome, Stephen. We have um, Terry coming through to us. Welcome, Terry. Yes, welcome. Lovely to be here. Good afternoon. Terry Beach from the city of from Hamilton, the city of the future thinking. <laughs> I work at Morrisville College. Welcome, Terry. Uh, we've got uh, Adam, you're up next. <coughs> Uh, yep, I'm uh, Adam Baker, and uh, I'm teacher of Year 5 and 6 at Riverhead Primary, and I'm also a team leader there, and I'm a bit nervous about presenting today, but looking forward to it. And Adam, can you tell us where Riverhead Primary is, please? Uh, it's in northwest of Auckland, which is, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Kerry? Oh, it's Kerry, your sound, please. Your sound is off. No. No, no sound, Kerry. Who are you can playing? You hear, can you yes. hear me now? Yes, I can. It's a bit oh, echoey, but yeah. go for it. It's yeah. those earphones, sorry. Um, my name is Kerry, and I'm a Year 7 teacher at Tamatia Intermediate, which is in Napier. 
um, and excited to be presenting um, this afternoon. Thank you, Kerry. Shona. Hi, I'm Shona Poppy. I'm from Tatai Coast School in Papamoa and I'm teaching year four at the moment. Yep, that's me. And Papamoa is where, Shona? Oh, Tauranga, where? Bay of Plenty. Thank you. That's for people who are not, who are not Kiwis. Um, oh, right. <laughs> and Rachel, you're our lucky last. Um, hang on a minute, I'm just going to come back. <laughs> where are you? There you go. Rachel? Um, kia ora everybody, I'm Rachel Chisnell, I teach at Tairi College in Dunedin. Um, something I learned last week was about <coughs> sodium and water, and that if you add sodium to water it's not hydrogen gas exploding, it's the sodium ions are rapidly repelling. So that was some new chemistry I learned last week, it was pretty cool. Cool, because you were at, were at a conference, weren't you Kerry? <coughs> um, yeah, I was in at BioLive ChemEd in Wellington, it was lovely. Amazing conference. Welcome. All right. Um, just kicking straight off, uh, I'm going to share my screen now, Ginny. If you and you're going to put the timer on me, I won't be. Hopefully, won't be quite um, three minutes. So um, you guys will need to talk talk to me how I'm doing because I can't see my screen once I go through. Can you see the main system? Hello. Yes. Cool. Yep. All right, so here, here is our wonderful presentation presenters we've got um, lined up at the bottom, and we've got at the out on the Twitter sphere we've got Monica who's going to be broadcasting for us, and she's she's going to help make um, Teach Meet and Z number one on the Twitter trend this morning, this afternoon. We've also got Ginny from Newmarket School who's our assistant principal. Um, just to alert you to some upcoming um, education events, uh, shout out we've got some Mind Lab learners out there, and I'm going to talk about them next. EdgeCamp Auckland coming up, EdgeCamp Global, You Learn and Māori Language Week. I'm a teacher at Newmarket School, so of course I must give a call for my, about my school. We're a school in Auckland, a small inner city primary school. Um, I'm a core education e-fellow, so a shout out to our, the other e-fellows out there. Um, and Teach Me NZ was seeded from my inquiry into hyperconnectivity. And it developed with my Teach NZ sabbatical. All my learning is flamed with solar taxonomy, and a shout out there to Pam Hook who um, helps uh, frame my learning. Also to Julie Lindsay with Flat Connections, who's been helping me um, fine tune my global um, education systems. And here's our team again. Those of you, if you've picked up um, this presentation, you're about to pick up the um, Hangout in three different ways. So at Mind Lab today, we've got Ritu. Call out to you, Ritu, and uh, Justine and Michael. Um, hope that your sessions are all going well out there and then Michael you dried off and we've got uh, Philippa down in Wellington and Tim Gander oh, just gone blank on me Tim where you up now and Helen of Troy um, and Anna who are also um, Mind Lab past students and facilitators um, I said I'd give a call out to Mind Lab to all of those of you learning today Next Saturday we've got the um, EdgeCamp Auckland happening, so do come and join us. Uh, Fiona Grant uh, oversees that. There's a great link there for you to go in and um, register your interest. Soon after that we've got the Language Week, uh, Te Reo Māori Language Week. So hopefully that's all in everybody's planning and that everybody's going to do a bit of a, it's going to do a big focus on that. <coughs> we also have ULEARN coming up in October. Um, I'm presenting there to do with my flat connection student project and I'll also do something to do with Teach Me in Z. And that's it from me. How did I go, Ginny? Um, really good. Two minutes thirty seconds, Sonia. Good job. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so I just have to unshare my screen and I'm back with you. And coming up first, um, we've got Stuart. The camera's on you, Stuart. If everyone else can turn your cameras and your microphones off, please. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. As I said previously, uh, my name is Stuart Kelly, Deputy Principal at Arere College and Year 13 English teacher. And I'm just going to share my presentation with you now. Yes, Stuart, it's there. It's live now. 
Okay, so the focus of my presentation today is digitising my Level 3 NCA English class. As you can see, I teach a multi-ethnic class and even within the 302 class there are a range of abilities and interests in English. So I wanted a platform that would engage and enable them all to achieve. The idea for digitising my NCA English class came from three areas. One, my five-year-old son Aidan, who is a pure digital native and highly confident and competent. In the middle, my 302 English students that are very capable digital exponents using social media. And to my right, my RDD digital team, who are highly innovative, passionate, and keen on student achievement and student learning. To fully deliver a digital NCA English class requires a range of resources. The two predominant ones I used was my Weebly website for static display and Google Classroom for every single period. I also used a range of the Google Apps and also a range of devices. Originally we wanted to go one to one with cell phones. Although cell phones were and still are a fantastic asset in our classroom, there were production issues that came up quite quickly. We therefore made the decision to go one-to-one -one laptops for every lesson. There were two major challenges. One, to develop effective digital citizens that met the demands of the New Zealand curriculum that were literate, capable and most of all, safe. The second big challenge that thankfully didn't come to full fruition was the infrastructure, having recently had our SNP upgrade and Network for Learning installed and significant Wi-Fi infrastructure developments, our digital ecosystem was not a concern. This project has had a huge impact on my teaching. I feel that there is learning, not teaching now occurring in the classroom. I have not written on a whiteboard since March the 4th. I spend a lot more time one-to-one -one asking and answering questions guiding from the side and looking at my teaching and learning, my pedagogy and achievement through the students' point of view. Without a doubt, this project has enhanced the learning process. As you can see on the left, students are happy and engaged, and on the right, there has been a significant uptake and pleasing improvement in peer teaching and collaboration, planned or otherwise. Here is an classic example of how the project has enhanced the learning process in my 302 English classroom. One of my students during a lesson found information in the form of a video about two World War I poets. She sent me the link and instantly we turned it into a class sharing activity where students were able to comment via Google Classroom. This series of images displays the significant impact that the project has also had on my students. As you can see at the top, as the ability of students to complete assessments anywhere, anytime ensures 100% completion. On the bottom left is an example of how the whole assignment is pushed out via Google Classroom and this assignment was co-constructed with my students and on the bottom right my students are increasingly becoming confident and contributing to the net in the form of, in this case, a guest blog from one of my students. So what message would I like to convey? And what have I learned from this experience? Don't wait, go. You will never get the perfect solution, so why wait? Think blue sky down and then come back and focus on pedagogy and course design. Most importantly, you have to believe in your students. They will surprise you and in many cases know way more than you do. Also, you need to prioritise the students first, then the pedagogy, then the infrastructure and last of all, consideration of devices. And I love this phrase, fail forward, fail up and achieve faster. Here's a range of useful links that I've found beneficial in my preparation for this class, the undertaking of this class and the students. Weebly for education, the Google Apps, Screencastify, my static English website, our school digital website and lastly my personal blog. I hope you've enjoyed my presentation and don't wait, fail now. Thank you. Great, um, Stuart. Lovely pace. Ginny, time please. It was a great pace, but just uh, 4 minutes 39 seconds. <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs>
Well done, um, Stuart. Uh, could we have the cameras on, everyone, and any feedback for Stuart? <coughs> I just really like the idea of the device being last. Think of your students, then the pedagogy and the task. It's so often people seem to forget that. I like celebrating failure as a learning curve. So many children yeah. are scared of failure and they should see it as being their friend. Mm. Yeah. And, and also um, for the teachers also to uh, take that sort of disposition on board about us, us being allowed to fail as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Working alongside them as well, I thought that was great. Instead of teaching um, to them, working alongside them. Thanks a lot guys and girls. I'll pay you later. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Stuart. I love, the way, I love the way you were proud of not using the whiteboard. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, thanks, Stuart. Tash, you're up next. Good to go? Um, yes. Kia ora, ko Natasha Taku Ingoa. I'm currently based at Newmarket Primary School in Auckland. I've been working with Tuafitu or Akarana in RTLB cluster based in Auckland. Yep, um, we can see some, Yeah, we can see the screen now. I'm sharing instead of presenting. <laughs> yep, cool. Now it's now it's up, Tash. My world revolves around communities. One of them is my gaming community. When I relax, I'm not sitting on a couch watching TV. I'm on a computer talking to them, talking to people around the world. Some of them I know in real life. Some I've gamed with for eight years. Some I don't know, and I only met yesterday. When I was at university, I was introduced to my first MMO RPG in a voice program called Ventrilo. From there, a whole new world opened up to me. What kept me there was intrigue. I wanted to know how 40 people who didn't know each other managed to communicate to achieve their goals. Through conversations, I started to learn more about computers and programs, and the internet started to become an ocean instead of a lake. I wanted to watch, I started to watch YouTube videos which led to channels and blogs and websites. I discovered the Guild and Felicia Day became a person of interest for me and I followed her growth over the last few years. Forming relationships helped not only my online game development but also my growth as a person and a learner and a leader. People rise to challenges in different ways. You learn how to communicate differently when you can't see someone's expressions or hear their voice. Sleep and burnout are a major challenge when you raid till 2am. When I hit the classroom, I realised I couldn't keep raiding as it wasn't fair on the children. Our challenge as teachers is how to grab and maintain their attention in the same way that a game does. It made me more open-minded to, towards people, I guess, and their capabilities and aware of how much we underestimate what children are capable of. The net's a small place if you don't explore. I'm always astounded when teachers aren't aware of things like the Minecraft wiki, which I guarantee their students use on a daily basis. The biggest growth for me was asking for help. It's about making connections and knowing who can help you with what. You have to research, you have to watch, you have to talk to others. And tolerance is also a huge thing when you're dealing with a wide range of unknown people. I've become hyper-aware of trying to recognise people's hidden talents and knowledge. Our parent base is also changing, and they access a variety of social media and games, and yet we still do written reports. So I keep waiting for the day when we'll switch to electronic reporting with video and audio instead of just paper. Gaming isn't in front of a TV computer tuning out the world. Gaming is like education. It's about connections, collaboration, and communication. So pay attention to what your kids are playing. Look at how Minecraft, for example, has grown in popularity over the last five years. Uh, Major League Gaming is a sport, and it's growing yearly on a global scale. It might be sooner rather than later that we see it seeping into our classroom. And here's some links for people who wanted to know more about gaming and, yeah, have, have some things to have a look at. Thank you. Thanks, Tash. Um, Time, Ginny, please. Yeah, just under three minutes. Well done, Tash. Thank you. <laughs> Great. 
And Tash, I really like the way that each of your slides, um, each of those images is linked to a, a URL so that you don't have too many on the back. Um, and Monica, if you're hearing, a shout out to Peggy Sheehan, please. Um, we got this right, Tash. Peggy Sheehy. Peggy Sheehy. Yeah, she's she's awesome. Um, she she turned up last year to Ichad and Z conference. Yeah, thank you. She developed the Wow in schools. So she's amazing. Yeah. Um, any feedback for Tash? <clears throat> It was great, Tash. I hadn't heard the term raid. I really like that term. <laughs> um, yeah, something new that I've learned today. And certainly, um, it's really, I think it's really important, like you talked about, keeping an open mind and making sure that we do explore as teachers. So, thank you. Yeah. I love the idea of getting rid of written reports. I, I just think they're such a tick boxing exercise. You know, oh, yes. they just drive me mad. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> it's just so delayed. <laughs> yeah, it's not real. It's it's a perfunctory three sentences. What does it mean? Yeah. Natasha, I like the fact you talked about how people rise to different challenges. And the great tip I got out of it was you said, look at what your students are playing. And from my point of view, that gives a great insight into how to teach these kids in the modern world. So I yes. thought that was a fantastic piece of advice. Natasha, great to, great to see that collaboration and communication come through in your talk. <coughs> yes, yeah, very important. Um, last year I had a, an assignment to do for Flat Connection, so I had a big long talk to Tash because she's the only real big, real, real gamer that I know. I know that she's, um, oh Tash, I've forgotten the, link, the name again. What's the term? Guildmaster. She's a Guildmaster. Oh, guildmaster. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I knew she's a guild master, so I was able to go to her and get a lot of information, especially after the new media consortium um, report about gaming and its implication on classrooms. And I took some of those ideas back to um, to what I was doing in my own class with the children, things like um, leaderboards, mm. etc. Yeah, thanks, Tash. And they looked amazing. Thank you. Um, okay, let's move on. Thanks, everyone. Um, We've got uh, Stephen. You're up next. <coughs> okay. Hi. And while you're getting up, sitting up, Stephen, um, I, I'm just going to say I hope that Greg, you're out there listening. Please tweet. Please tweet. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Okay. Right. Thanks, hi, Stephen. my name. Hi, my name is Stephen DeBrain. I work at New Lim Primary School in Auckland, and I'm a Year One and Two teacher. Yeah, your screen is live. So myself and Jess O'Sullivan created our personalized goals together. We work in two single cell classrooms, practicing a modern learning approach to teaching. We have a classroom of 50 children, which we call the learning studio. We created personalized reading goals for the kids in our learning studio to use. And in the left column are their goals. If their goal is highlighted, that means that they know that goal. The kids are able to highlight these goals independently when they decide that that goal has been achieved. The goals that are not highlighted are their next steps, what they need to learn. The goals progress and become more challenging as the child moves down the document. We got the goals from the reading progressions and translated them into kids speak. So the goals range from learning their alphabet letters and sounds, to learning diagraphs, to learning short vowel sounds. In the right-hand column are the resources that kids use to help them achieve their goals. We have a wide variety of different resources that we suggest they use. We have a high expectation that the resources that they choose um, to use help them with their goal, and we often run around asking them, what is your goal, and how is this helping you with your goal? Each child has their own Google Drive account with different folders where they save their work. In their reading folder, they have their reading goal and examples of, of their learning that they use as evidence to show that they have achieved their goals. For example, taking photos of different activities. So where did the idea come from? We wanted a system that promotes student agency where the kids can easily access their goals 
as well as having progressions with manageable steps that promote perseverance. We thought it was important for junior kids to have a map of what they needed to learn to succeed, while allowing them the freedom to choose their next steps. There was nothing out there, so we decided to create our own. We, we began by introducing the goals on paper first and made, an, made it an expectation that they know their goal and what they're working on. We wanted the kids to become familiar with the process of highlighting what they know at a, and identifying their next steps, so we gave them highlighters to use. We wanted them to, we also wanted them to, uh, we also wanted to make sure that they knew why they were learning these goals, making a connection between learning their goals and moving up in their reading levels. Some of our biggest challenges were changing the way that they think. The children were used to the teacher setting them up with their next activity that is related to, these, to their group's learning intention. They were now expected to, to identify what they already know, what their next goal is, and think, what can they do to achieve that? A few kids found this process too challenging, so we decided to create a reading goal tumble. This is a simplified version of their reading goal on their iPad. This meant those kids were scaffolded into being self-directed learners, and when they were ready, they moved on to their reading goal on their iPad. Ding! The impact on my teaching has meant that I spend less time creating follow-up activities for the reading groups and more time conferencing with individual children around their individualized goal. The impact on our students has meant that they've become more aware of their learning and the purpose for their learning, while becoming more determined to succeed. Thanks to Google Drive, the impact on the learning process has meant that the partnership between home and school has been enhanced. Parents are able to see what their kids are learning and discuss this with their child at home. So just some advice. Don't, under, don't underestimate junior kids. Have high expectations for them. Do not be afraid to try new things. When beginning something new, give it time and persevere. And put all your effort into it. Make sure that the end product is something that you are proud of. Here are some readings that I found useful, but I learned but I learned the most from visiting, observing, and discussing with others. Thank you for listening. Thanks, Stephen. Awesome. I loved um, the way you've pulled it all together, and I really like the way technically. I love the way you bring in those arrows to really highlight what it is you're saying. Um, Jenny, time, please. <coughs> yeah, four minutes. Four minutes twelve. Thank you. Lovely. Um, any discussion for um, Stephen? Stephen? Yeah, I'd, I'd like to say, Stephen, that it's. I think it's um, awesome that you're teaching the dispositions around agency to your young students. Um, it w as a year seven teacher, it would be really neat to see that sort of stuff coming through more and more. Definitely, yeah. It's good to see Stephen, that progression. Like the, oh, you guys, yeah. Yeah. So Stephen, I like the fact that you, you're already asking students what is their goal and how is the teaching or learning contributing to that. And I think that's a, a question that teachers need to ask more. And I think it's often teachers may be a little bit afraid to ask because they may find out their teaching and learning towards the students isn't as effective mm. as they think it is. Awesome. Yes, making students aware of what their next learning steps. That's that's the start for students taking responsibility for their learning. That's great stuff. Yeah, definitely. Yes, yeah, Stephen, I love how you talk about um, about their high expectations and not to lower them, particularly because they are um, younger. Mm -hmm. um, but I also love how um, you're strengthening that homeschool partnership as well by encouraging parents mm -hmm. to um, work alongside what they're learning at school. That's great. Yeah, definitely. And the parents love it. The parents, yeah. yeah. It's good to see. Thank you. Okay. Um, Terry, you're next. Thank you, Stephen. Camera's on you. Okay, good afternoon and welcome. Thank you, uh, Sonia, for organising organizing this. It's great to be here. I'm Terry Beach from Morrinsville College, and um, I spend, some would say, too much time online, but the stuff that I read, I like to try and see if I can implement it into the classroom. OK. 
Okay, you want to share your screen? Coming through sharing screen now should... Ah, share. Yep. Yes, and... Cool, it's up now. I'm off. Terry Beach from Morrinsville College. This is uh, my reflections on what I'm really doing here is externalising my thinking. In real estate, it's location, location, location. In design, it's research, research, research. And in teaching, I believe, it's relationships, relationships, relationships. Now, those relationships require, require communication. I thought about calling this presentation 1C or maybe one C to rule them all. But in the end, I just decided to call it collaboration. In our department, what we've been doing is we've been sandwiching collaboration and communication between critical thinking and creativity. I introduced this after reading the works of Tony Wagner. Since this time, I've realized that there has been the seven Cs, where Will Richardson has added cross-cultural understanding, computing, which is really about communication, and career and self career and learning self-reliance. Now I need to have a terms of reference. I need to ask myself, does, the, does collaboration foster confident, connected, lifelong learners? Does collaboration foster values? Does collaboration follow the key competencies? And I've been through those and looked at it. It sits really nicely. It's, it's, it's an easy fit. It's a, a natural fit. So by teaching collaboration, these other things will follow. And also looking at pathways to employment and pathways to further learning, we know that employers are looking for these communication. They, they've, they've said that communication and collaboration type things are number one. So what can this look like in the classroom? We know when students are engaged that they know what they want to learn, how, what and when they're going to learn it, and they know the next steps in their learning, and they know how well they have learned it. Now we, can, we can achieve that by having passion projects, but we need to remember that passion projects are not, are not the end, they're a means to an end. Passion projects are, an, are a vehicle to enable students to say, hey, yes, I am really good at something. And from that, we can help our students to build a growth mindset and to try some things that perhaps they're not so good at and build their resilience through that. So talking to my students, I wanted to create a design task that was it had to be topical, it had to have an unknown outcome, it had to have an authentic audience, and it had to make a difference. So we decided that we, we would look at the election and what the students had to do, they had a whole lot of tasks to do that we negotiated and discussed and brainstormed and designing a logo and designing a hoarding and all those sorts of things. And then we had some extension tasks and some extra tasks uh, where they could go a little bit deeper. The students worked in a group and they had to choose who was going to be participation, who was going to be perspective taking, social regulation, task regulation and knowledge building. When the students came to have a practice, I thought afterwards, gosh, these students really aren't at the standard that I think they should be at. And Ding. not surprisingly, once we had an authentic audience, we were really fortunate to have Jacinda Ardern came in and these students really raised their game. And Jacinda Ardern, she is a, she's a personality in the classroom and she was just drawing the information out of the students. She was, she was marvellous. And the students did really, really well at presenting their ideas. And when they were questioned about it, they really knew their stuff. We used we used this, uh, this matrix, this, uh, this rubric for assessment of, of social dimension, and I'll just, I won't go into this too much, but it's here for you to have a look at later. And what we did is we sat down with it. The students all had different coloured highlighters, and they all had to assess each other and themselves, and then I sat down with them in a group, and we discussed it together. That was a really powerful learning experience going through that. Reflecting back on the task, why was it a success? The students told me it was a success and they enjoyed it because it had student agency. It was a negotiated task. They were learning with and from their peers. Learning was a social activity. It had an authentic 
audience, and we did assessment with the learner. Thank you for listening to this presentation. Thanks, Terry. Um, there's a you've got it. I know that this is a passion of yours, and I've heard you speak about it before um, last year, and which is where how you've managed to be part of the session. Um, so thank you for sharing your your learning and your knowledge. Um, anyone else got any comments for Terry? Oh, sorry, Anthony. Time. time. Yeah, the time was yeah. uh, four minutes thirty-six. Excellent. Thank you. Just taking a quick selfie, Sonia. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> You're not using my iPad, though, are you? Good. <laughs> I really agree with you about the relationships. If you don't have a relationship, a relationship, you you can't learn. You can't learn. Yeah. I, I, agree. I, I agree. Um, I was just talking um, about the same just thing. The same um, thing. just um, you know, it's always always coming back to those the collaborating and the communicating and yeah, that yeah, that community and working together and together and yeah, I love it. I love it. I like the fact that the students are able to take something more than just knowledge away from the situation, taking away life skills, resilience, amazing, amazing. Yeah. Terry, that was good. I, I like the fact that we prioritise collaboration above everything else. And, and one phrase that really came through was assess with the learner, and I think that's really important. And I think they're going to learn more from the assessment um, that way. So nice work. Nice work. Yeah, I, I um, really enjoyed that too. In particular, um, I liked the rubrics, and I actually like to look at that clearer because I think because obviously given a really nice guiding line, line that the learning potential, the success criteria that they're, they're um, being guided by, I'd really like to look at that closer. It was great. Thanks, Terry. Terry. The, okay. the, the rubric that the I rubric used was from a Coursera like course that I did, that I did. and it, it was a really good value course. Mm. And of course, yeah. just, just in, in, in finishing up, it was really interesting having a Labour spokesman come into what is um, Blue Blood Moran School, so it really was interesting. Okay, thanks Terry. Um, thanks for sharing. Adam, you're up next. <laughs> We can see the presentation. Yeah, everything's fine. Oh, um, cool. I'm Adam Baker from Riverhead Primary in Auckland, and I'm a team leader and teacher on Year Five and Six. Um, we're going to show you a project that two, of the two boys in my class did, which is they created a comic on Comic Life about Star Wars. Um, where did the idea come from? Two boys absolutely loved Star Wars, almost obsessed with it. They wanted to create a comic. So and they used the Return of the Jedi comic for inspiration. Uh, and they needed an independent follow-up task as part of their daily five rotation and draw a comic in their books. So I suggested to them that they use Comic Life to give it more authenticity, just to give it a, a bit of context. Uh, what resources or tools did they use? Um, was comic Life 3 was obviously the main one. Um, Return of the Jedi comic book was where the idea came from, and they used Google Images to put the images into the comic. Um, I implemented the, um, the tool by um, allowing the boys to play with Comic Life 3 to help them become accustomed to how it worked, and then I just showed them how to save images from the web and how to put them in a folder in iPhoto so they could easily access them. Um, I had to monitor, monitor their progress regularly to ensure that they follow the original storyline because they were so passionate about it they wanted to go off into all sorts of uh, angles and, uh, they prov and I provided them with the criteria of what I expected from the project. Um, well the biggest challenges were taking time within the class to model using iPhoto and Comic Life initially just while I had the rest of the class around. Um, ensuring that the storyline made sense and followed a logical sequence because once again they they wanted to go on other stuff. Uh, and putting a limit on how long their comic 
comic could be, um, and making sure they use images that match their text so that this enabled their storyline to flow and, and to make sense. And what impact has the project had on my teaching? Um, it has it's inspired me to provide more options based on what the children are interested in. So I try and find out what they're interested in and, and, and then pursue that. Um, it's also made me revamp my whole reading program uh, and base it around using digital technology and Bloom's taxonomy so they can kids can get the most out of out of, out of reading. Um, and this is improved it, aimed at improving their ability to use their higher order thinking skills to to improve their reading, which is a focus in our school at the moment. Um, has it enhanced the learning process? Uh, it definitely has, because now the other children are more more motivated to um, to complete collaborative projects. Um, it's given them a meaningful context for their reading, and best of all, they think reading is now fun, which is which is awesome. This is the goal. Um, <clears throat> there's now a wider use of technology across the curriculum, so not just in reading, but in maths and other areas and context and topic inquiry. Um, writing, everything, they're just more keen to use it. Um, and the boys are a lot more engaged. They, they find, they want to do reading because they get to do this at the end of it, so, which is awesome. And a good spin-off is also that they're now choosing more challenging books as their levels increase, which, which is also awesome. And one message I'd like to convey to my colleagues is, the big one is really take the time to okay. discover what, what the children are passionate about and provide them with the necessary tools to pursue their passions. And be open-minded and flexible enough to allow the children to teach you anything new that they may have found. And then if it's worthwhile, use it in your class, because I learned as much about this as what the boys did. And some links is to my blog where the completed um, comic is, and the Comic Life website where you can look for yourself and see, see what they have to offer. Thanks. Oh, sorry. Thanks, Adam. I didn't <laughs> have my microphone on. <laughs> Great. No well done. You did it. <laughs> I, I love I love the comics. It's also been something I've been doing for um, as part of my inquiry. Mm. So um, Jenny's my mentor for what I, for my literacy program, and so I, I love that. So I might have a big chat with you later about about it all. Yeah. 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 I thought publishing um, it on Comic Life would have been a really good way to engage those boys. Yeah, they, they love it. Yeah, definitely. Um, Adam, just by the way, your time was 3.49. Oh, good. And I, I love using Comic Life. I think it's um, a, really cool, a really cool tool, and I love how you're meeting the passions um, and interests of the kids. So I think that's uh, and putting it in a meaningful context. It's fantastic. And also just, and also um, just how you're talking um, about you're being open-minded open enough to learn, learn from them. Learn from them. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you, you I have to. That was, yeah. That was, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Adam, I love the fact that you stayed on track and made sure that students stayed on track, but they focused on the ultimate aim of improving reading, uh, particularly the cool learning content. Uh, this fantastic idea. Yeah, because I get so into it, that, boy, like anyone, you're really into it, they just wanted to tell me the whole return of the time, which is a bit too, too long, you know? <laughs> too long, you know? <laughs> Adam, your students Adam, your are using, using drawing as a thinking as a tool, thinking which, is a, which is a really advanced really skill. It's great, skill. To it's great to see. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, um, thank you. Thanks, Adam. Uh, uh, Kerry, the camera's on you now. So, and while you're just setting up, Kerry, um, there's some questions too from the audience, from the Twitter audience, so I'll go over those at the end. Okay, so yeah, we, can, we, can we can see, see it. it. Can yeah, and now it's in present. Thanks, Kerry. Awesome. Okay, so um, I'm Kerry at Tamatea Intermediate in Napier and a Year 7 teacher and I'm pretty excited to be sharing um, New Zealand Read Aloud which is a literacy initiative modelled on the Global Read Aloud which I started at the beginning of this year. Um, it's aimed at this stage at Year 6, 7 and 8. Uh, the purpose to focus on New Zealand authors, 
writing New Zealand stories and the mission is one book to connect Kiwi kids. Like I said, the idea came from the Global Read Aloud initiative which was started by American teacher Pernille Rip in 2010. Uh, the concept of one book to connect the world was pretty inspirational for my students and I last year. Um, and I've included here the links to um, her website, her personal website and the Global Read Aloud website and Facebook page if you want to find out more information about that. Um, the first thing I did was create the blog and the link is there for the New Zealand Read Aloud blog. Uh, I embedded a Google form in there where visitors could register their interest and also suggest book titles. Um, I've now created a Facebook group for us all as well where uh, there's about 50 teachers and educators and authors who are involved in that and we discuss anything to do with New Zealand Read Aloud on that Facebook group. Um, to get organised, I had to place teachers into groups, into teams. Uh, everyone signed themselves into Edmodo. Uh, which is the platform we used for sharing and collaborating. The lead teachers created their group, which is the screenshot on the left, and as students joined, they were all placed into smaller discussion groups, which is an example is the screenshot on the left there. Uh, and this is where the literacy circles, the online literacy circles, took place in these groups. Uh, we also used um, Twitter with the hashtag NZReadAloud2 to collaborate and share as well. My biggest challenge at the start um, was how to give instructions for teachers to uh, sign themselves and get used to Edmodo uh, via email. That was quite tricky at the beginning. Uh, having discovered Screencastify, I have um, solved that little issue now and am now in the process of creating a series of screencasts which I share on the Facebook page for teachers. Um, the impact on my teaching, well the New Zealand Read Aloud has had the potential to integrate itself into other curriculum areas which is something I'm really interested in. It provides opportunities for connecting with other passionate teachers and learning alongside them and sharing ideas for tasks which makes for true collaborative teaching. Reading Aloud allows us to model the strategies for getting meaning from text to our kids and it's provided many opportunities for just-in-time teaching and learning. Uh, the le learning has been enhanced because students are sharing their understanding, ideas, opinions and thoughts with others. They are co-constructing co knowledge. Learners are contributing to literary discussions, extending their vocab and developing their comprehension strategies. New Zealand Read Aloud is providing authentic learning experiences and our Skype with the author and the park ranger at Yellowstone Park were highlights of New Zealand Read Aloud too. Um, and alongside all of the students are learning the importance of digital citizenship. Uh, just a very quick slide, um, that's pretty cool, a student having a conversation with Susan Brocker, the author. And also using Twitter for authentic learning and sharing and discussion was um, ongoing throughout the six weeks of the Read Aloud. Um, the impact on my kids, students are learning the power of being connected and building knowledge collaboratively. There is an increase in interest and motivation in reading. New Zealand Read Aloud provides opportunities for learners to use their curiosity to delve deeper into aspects of the story that interest them. They're understanding that the world is bigger than them and extends beyond the walls of their classroom. And just very quickly to finish, embrace New Zealand Read Aloud wholeheartedly. Set it up thoroughly, read with passion and enthusiasm and the students will get that vibe and they'll get hooked into this. Uh, thank you so much for listening and the link there on that last screen is to the Read Aloud blog. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kerry. Um, great. I love I love the New Zealand Read Aloud concept. I know that I'm part of that Facebook group, and I have been um, popping in and out to seeing what's been happening. I've just sent a message out now to Peniel Rip um, to let her know that you've been on. Yeah, that cool. It was amazing to have a hangout with her. Actually, uh, that that was a pretty special moment. Yeah, I bet it was. Yeah, she's a pretty amazing educator. 
and I've been following her for a long time. Um, Ginny, time please. Uh, four minutes thirty-three. Whoops. <laughs> no, no record breakers this time. Um, <laughs> to Georgie, she still holds the three-minute record. <laughs> she was a, she's been the perfect time ever. Um, anybody else got some feedback for Kerry? Um, I just thought it was really cool the way that the children could actually connect with um, accomplished authors. Mm. So it must be mm. quite uh, motivational mm. for children who would like to go into that sort of thing as well. Yeah, for sure. It makes it makes the book come alive, really. Mm. And just re-emphasizing um, the fact that reading aloud gives us opportunities to model those strategies mm. for kids. Because yeah. I, I think you know reading aloud is so important, and you know some people I guess kind of skip over that. Part sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've I've just put a, a post into the Facebook group about that because to me the really important other side of in the read aloud the collaboration the collaboration important but the modelling of strategy strategy is is vital as well. Yeah. Kerry, I love the way you talked about just in time learning and also a, a brilliant quote that. Through New Zealand read them out, they, the students become aware that the world is bigger than their classroom and I think that's a powerful learning experience for them. Yeah, thanks. Uh, that, that was the um, mission statement or part of Peniel Rip's Peniel Global Read Aloud Global statement that I contacted her about if I, if I could use that on my blog too, so um, yeah. yeah. Very cool. Bigger than them, yeah. Than them. yeah. Inspiring, oh, Kerry. I'll be reading to my form class uh, my learning hub next week. They're never too old. They will read. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be looking into this. It looks really cool. It looks really cool. I'm I'm really hoping at some stage we can um, take it further than just six, seven, and eight. But it's become quite big, and I'm, I'm I think I'm probably going to have to get some um, get some colleagues on board to clear the co papa I think. Because yeah. the group is up to forty. I think I checked the forty-two, isn't it, at the moment? Um, yeah. So that's yeah. fifty, Sonia. I think for NZ oh, Read Letter Three. Yes, yeah, moving fast. Cool. Okay, um, we've got Shona up next. Oh, she's already, she's already up and ready. She's got a screenshot and everything. Thank you, Shona. Um, Mike, you need to come on after just to say hello. <laughs> it's all right. Okay, oh. Shona, I'm just going to turn it off. No, it's all right. Keep going. Don't, don't, don't. We'll come back to that. Okay. All right, off you go. All right. Okay, good afternoon. I'm Shona Poppy. I'm teaching Year 4 in a team of three others in the school in Papamaa, and we're a BYOD Apple school. I'm speaking about my journey to create an inclusive classroom environment. I have a range of learners from Oz funded to gifted. My aim has been to allow each student to get the most of their learning experience. Firstly, I developed a personal learning network using a variety of sources to look for trends which will give you a starting point. So this has, has been an amalgamation of ideas, mostly Twitter and YouLearn conferences. My resources are the teachers in my team and our learning support assistants. We use a combination of iOS and OS 10 devices along with a variety of iPad apps and web tools. I use Blooms and Kahoot is a great online quiz tool for reading comprehension which the children create and direct. We have recently got into coding as well. By having mixed collaborative grouping the students can take advantage of peer tutoring and learning buddies. We are using the assistive technology built into the devices which has given more of the students access to information. There are lots of skills the students need to learn. First, give them time to explore and experiment. Mixed ability groups gives the students access to a variety of skills and ideas amongst their peers. The students need to be guided as to how to research a topic, sift through information, and then convey what they have learned or understood. When creating a presentation as a group, they need to practice breaking the task down and making sure each group member is contributing the best they can, no passengers. We share our finished products, look at what worked well and what we have learned. Students are given a chance to share their findings with an authentic audience such as our assemblies, their peers and we're going to start sharing on our Fano Facebook. Our challenges have been to bring the students up to speed with the use of devices, Google Docs, file management and file sharing. We have worked on fostering a culture of understanding that everyone has something to contribute. We are developing our time management skills. As a teacher I feel I'm building independence in my students. 
The onus is on the students to bring the content to the presentations. This also gives us the flexibility to go deeper if the students find something interesting. We can make the most of the teachable moment and we are enjoying the creativity. Learners can contribute as much as they're able to. The more gifted children have the opportunity to move ahead while it takes the pressure off the children who need assistance as they can get support from their peers without feeling inadequate. Although there is a lot of group work, I do leave room for the introverts by sometimes giving the students a choice of grouping and they can choose to work on their own if they want. The assistive technology has given more learners access to the curriculum. Learners are risk taking. They get the chance to adjust and perfect their presentation. It gives some learners an opportunity to be the expert. The students enjoy the autonomy to follow their interests, direct some of their own learning and use their strengths. We combine many ideas to formulate something that works for us as teachers and our students. As the students become more proficient with the ICT devices, there comes a tipping point where they are capable of making their own choices when it comes to what they, how they want to present their learning. The greatest sign of success for a teacher is to be able to say, the children are now working as if I did not exist. Maria Montessori. Well done. Well done, Shona. <laughs> a very good time. Ginny? Ginny, you've Sorry. got your microphone yep. muted. Yep. Yep. yep, 310. Fabulous, a really good time. Oh, it was nice. better than my five minutes, whatever it was last time. <laughs> <laughs> I really slashed and burned. <laughs> And it was good. It was good to hear it um, coming through nicely. People? Um, I was just uh, putting into Twitter just talking about the learners being given the opportunity to be the expert and to use their strengths. And I, I really like that, you know, that idea of, you know, the kids being given that. Yeah. Often people worry about if a student's got their own device that they're not um, working in groups, but you, I, I completely agree with you when you said that they're still working in groups even though they've got their own device. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're still contributing, collaborating. Especially because I think you've got um, the roles. They've all got a role there and that, like you said, yeah. everyone mm -hmm. is a participant and that's, mm -hmm. that is an expectation. Sharon, I like the way you talked about the authentic audience and the need for such an audience and that, that automatically means the learning is authentic and arguably embedded as well. So, great job. Great job. Mm. Yeah, thanks, looking, Joe. Looking after the introverts. Good to see. Good to see. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Um, Rachel, lucky last. Awesome. Awesome. Um, am I up? Am I up? Yes, your slides are up. Perfect. So, hi everybody. Hi everybody. I'm Rachel Chisnell from Tairi College in Dunedin. I'm a science and chemistry teacher, and this year I was um, really grateful to be part of the Microsoft Innovative Educator Expert program. So that to me in the Clippy Costroom in Sydney. Um, well, I was lucky enough to be selected to go to Seattle to the Global Educator Exchange. There were 249 educators from uh, about 90 different countries and a the theme of the conference was being brave. And we often talk about bravery of our students and I remember at Teachers College getting reminded to look after um, students who might not be so brave and how hard it is to put yourself out there. But we don't always, I think, support teachers um, to be brave in the classroom. And it was, as I said, a big focus of this meeting. Um, I got to go with some really amazing educators. So there's Ben Hilliam from St Andrews, Nikki Lang from Auckland, myself, Steve Martin from Howitt College, and Shane Mann from Rathkeel. And Anne Taylor took a spectacular amount of care of us um, while we were over there. The model that we were given is this. So this is what bravery stood for. Um, the first one is to be comfortable asking for help and we've got to stop thinking it's a sign of weakness. If we've got a class we're having difficulty with, you can so often sort of, people will just instantly say, oh, they're fine for me, instead of going, oh, well, this is working or that, have you tried this? Or um, So be comfortable asking for help. It's a sign that you're getting better. Respond to data and make sure that you collect it. If your students are not enjoying it, then you've 
got to find a way to change it. We've heard some really good examples of teachers doing this today, that they're looking at what their students are doing and altering their programs to suit. Always expect more from your students. I was having a discussion on Twitter about this just before. If year ones can self-manage, then my year 12 certainly should be able to. If you set your expectations low, the students will meet them. So expect more from your students and expect more from yourself. Uh, Visualise your success for me. I sort of look at this as how I want my lessons to look. A big focus of this is to make sure I'm focusing on the task and the pedagogy rather than the, the technology. Find the technology that suits the task, not the other way around. Um, that was an, another important message that's come through from today. Make sure you're enjoying yourself. I love teaching. I'm lucky I'm a science teacher. I get to set stuff on fire. Um, I enjoy my students. Make sure that they know that because if, that, you know, if they know you are enjoying them, they will be a lot more comfortable in your classroom. And the last two I think are the hardest. Make sure you are reaching for impact and you, have a, you are great. You have a responsibility to share. So get sharing what you do. Don't sit behind a closed door and think you're not good enough. What you're doing is amazing and even a little step, you will help someone else who is in the same place as you. Don't get put off by people who seem like they're doing all these awesome things. Everybody is in their own place and you can help somebody. We also got to talk to this guy, Zayudun Yusubai. Um, he was amazing. He is Malala's father. His daughter was shot by the Taliban and he is so hopeful for the future and so passionate about what education can do um, to bring to bring forward girls and boys in, in his culture and worldwide. So we have a responsibility to push for education. Um, if you're interested in more about the program, you can apply at the link there. Um, there's a whole heap of free tutorials about using 365 in your classroom available to you. If you want to know more about the program or my trip, there's some links for you there, or just flick us a line on Twitter. I'd be happy to talk to you. Thanks. Thank you, Rachel. Um, that My trip pleasure. must have just been amazing. Oh, it was. It was exceptional. Yeah. The the passion and the energy that people had was it was it was amazing. Yeah, yeah. and also being a science because that's the commonality between you and me as a science part too. Yeah. 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 So it's great to hear all that, and and I love I love your expression about setting things on fire. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, I've got the best job in the world. <laughs> Get to see stuff on fire and call it work. Anyone else? Um, I just love the the whole bravery. Just, um, you know, being brave in the classroom, supporting teachers who are being brave. Because I think often you have teachers who, you know, that kind of square peg round hole thing. They want to try new things. They want to do something that's a little bit different. Most people will frown upon it. And I guess, and I guess, yeah. If you're not a stronger person, you do. You back down and you go, okay, maybe that wasn't a good idea. Maybe I need to rethink it. You know. So just about that, that supporting. Yeah, I I really liked that and just um being comfortable. Asking for help as a strength, not a weakness. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks. I agree with that, and I, I particularly like how, how you talk about the sharing part. Sharing how it's important to share, share. That often we don't yeah. think it's good enough, good and good that, enough. um, or that we're too scared to. So definitely taking that leap. Leap. Oh, and three minutes thirty. Well done. Well done. Thanks. <laughs> 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 Some great sound bites there. I'm all about the sound <laughs> bite. <laughs> Rachel, I like the Rachel, fact that like you that demand for year ones that, that they have to have expectations, that they have to self manage, and I think that's something um, as teachers we almost tend to underestimate the students. So I think that's really important that we should expect all ages to self manage and um, become better independently. Better independently. Better independently. Better. A good job. A good job. It can be really hard too. If you're in a school and you're the sort of, I'm not saying I'm better or worse, but if you have different teachers with different methods and you're the one that's saying, no, I'm not going to give you the, the page number, look at the content page, then people go, oh, Mr. Chisel's a bit of a grump. But actually, you're trying to. Yeah. I am a grump sometimes. I am a grump sometimes. <laughs> no, no, no. I wear that label. <laughs> Proudly, with no, great pride. 
<laughs> it's important for the children to um, to learn to be self reliant. I mean, you're not going to be following them for the rest of their lives, finding their page numbers for them. So, no, no good on you. <laughs> okay. Um, anyone else? Just before we we just switch to the last part because our time is pretty much up. But that um, we have a question and. Um, if anyone else got something for Shona just before I switch through? Okay. Question and answer. Uh, on the left hand side, as a as the person who looks after the, the hangout, we've got some questions that have come through for some of you. Stuart from Tessa Gray. How does this affect your assessment practices, Stuart? Good question, Tessa. The the big challenge with running an NCA class is it's high stakes. So, what I did with my students is we co-constructed the assessments. Uh, I presented them with the assessment criteria, and we took the best part of two periods negotiating an assessment they felt comfortable with, and one that also met the various um, and quite at times stringent uh, expectations and, and specifications of the standard. So, the assessments weren't removed from the learning and um, achievement continuum, they were part of it, but they were secondary towards the actual journey, but they, they were a consideration right from the start. But great question, it's one that I had to focus on and, and, and think of heavily in terms of authenticity. Thank you Stuart. For Shona, um, again from Tessa, Tessa wants to know, um, are there specific roles defined in the groups? Um, most of the time we don't have absolutely defined roles. What we do is we get the children to take the whole, the whole presentation and then divide them up into jobs so each person uses the time well and so there's nobody hanging around waiting for anybody else. So they're, what they're doing is they're app smashing. So they decide what information they're going to do and what app they're going to use to present the information in. And that's how they that's, that's how they define the roles. In actual fact, they then come back together afterwards to put the presentation together. So that's how they do the roles. Yeah. Thank you, Shona. And um, Stephen again from Sam Hocking is: Have you found a significant impact on student agency and, in particular, student engagement increase? Um, yeah, definitely. Um, so we've just started implementing the reading goals. Um, during reading time, this term we're starting with math, but during reading time, um, the kids are definitely more more engaged, and you see a determination in them to be able to um, move and um, down their progression and achieve more goals because they see that as linked to increasing um, in their reading levels. Um, yeah, which they obviously want to be the best. <laughs> okay. Um. Thank you, Stephen and Terry. This one's for you. Uh, your microphone's, microphone's muted. muted. Uh, it says, this is from Sam Hopkins. I'm getting a bit of feedback. Um, what, processes, what process did you go through for the creation of the rubrics you used for self and peer assessment? Those rubrics, I can't claim to those. Those rubrics were stolen off a Coursera course that I did on collaborative assessment. But they certainly, the way that I used them, got the students to use highlighters so they could self assess and self each other. That was my own own little plan and that worked really well. Sitting down with the students and conferencing with them is is something that works really well and the students love having that discussion and, and they were really, really honest with the feedback that they gave themselves and the feedback that they gave each other. It was you know, we set some ground rules up beforehand but it worked really well. Okay. Um thank you Terry. Now, um, we're finishing off now. Just before I finish, um, Shona, just a shout out. You've got EduCamp BOP coming up. Can you just tell us a little bit more about that, please? Okay, EduCamp is a... Where people come along and they just do like what we've done here is, is present little tiny tasters of what they're doing in the classroom. Um, it's self-directed, so it means that by the end of it, if you're wanting to look at something a bit further, we sort of um, put up little post-it notes, and the most popular ones 
one, they'll run a, a separate session again. Uh, we also say don't be scared if you don't want to. If you just want to come along and just listen, and uh, you're more than welcome to. So I went to my first one this year. I didn't present, I just sat and listened to see how it went and absorbed some information. And that, that's on the 8th of August, isn't it? It is at um, Tatai School. Ta so you just come along. Yep, just come along. It's it's a 9:30 start for coffee and 10 o'clock start for the whole thing. You can go on. You can register. You can see who else is coming along as well. Yep. Uh, yep. We've got the um, the Auckland one is happening next week as well, which um, I've already spoken about, and I've added the Educam Bob on that presentation, which I'll also tweet out if you want more information. Um, but pretty much, I know we're we're running a little bit over time. But I take this opportunity to this amazing group of presenters. I'm just going to quickly flick you up, um, just to show you up. Kerry, um, Tash, Adam, Rachel, Shona, Steve, Stuart, Terry, Jenny, and myself. Um, yeah, just thank you so much for your time. I know it's been a lot of work, and you've done it. You've finished, and it's just been amazing. And I feel so proud of you all. So can we all? Give a big um, wave to our audience. We've got um, mm -hmm. currently back to 18 out there now, and who've been with us from the beginning. And we'll have people um, coming back and watching the rewinds as well, which is awesome. As soon as I finish the broadcast, you're about to go back and have a look at yourself, and I'll start cutting up the video for you for your um, digital portfolios. And if anyone else out there wants to join us in a teach me, do let me know. Um, go and fill in the form. And I look forward to seeing more of you again, both online and at a and at a face-to-face -face session. So thank you all, everyone, um, and a big thanks to you, Ginny, for doing such a great job as timekeeper with your ding um, and some of your feedback, which has been fabulous. And a shout out to to Monica, who's out there on Twitter, um, trending up there and keeping our our hour really strong. Thank you so much. Okay, and thanks everyone. So if um as we finish off, you want to say something before we finish? You can just drop off. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Sonia. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Sonia. Sonia. You're, um, lovely, lovely. Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks, Sonia. That was awesome. Yeah, great. Thanks, Sonia. Okay, I'm going to stop the broadcast now. Kakusiano. Kakusiano.